So we are at the Judean desert, means in the territory of the tribe of Judah. And Qumran was one of the six salt production cities belonged to the tribe of Judah. And the previous name of this uh, location was Sechacha, or the Judean name of it. But the name Qumran is probably also very old. Qumran means, or Kamer means moon in Arabic. Like Jericho, yes, Jericho also, the moon is in the name. The ancient pagans used to live here, worship the false god of moon. And we found more cities like that, all of them located next to large body of water. So something about the reflection of the full moon on the water lake, okay? So that's the ancient name Qumran. Now, around the year 100 BC, a group of approximately 120 people, 150 people, came and lived over here in what's considered to be the first monastery in the Western Wall. Three things uh, represents or express the ascetic character, the monastery character of this Kumeran community. First of all, large religious facilities. Approximately 18% of what you see around you is ritual bath. You remember purity and impurity were the most important things? So those people were baptizing before they uh, copied the scrolls, baptized before they ate, and they needed living water. Where they got the living water? The living water came from up there, from the uh, waterfall. On average, between five, one to five ti times every year, on average, between one to five times every year, there is a flash flood going down those Judean hills. The rain doesn't fall here, the rain falls up there. But the rainwater flashing down, you can see the waterfall over there. And if you look at the dirt path that you see over there, can you see it? Mm -hmm. On the right hand side of it, you can see stones. Those stones used to pave the aqueduct, the water canal. So they made the dam, diverted the water to this aqueduct. And the water came in and filled each one of the cisterns and the ritual bath of Kuvaran. Okay, that's how they got the living water. The book of Leviticus, for the ritual bath, for the mikveh, those water must come down from heaven. Okay, you're not allowed to pump them from the well. So, large religious facilities, radical simplicity. Those people had only two sets of clothing. They ate minimum amount of food. They live in a very radical discipline. They were led by a priest from the house of Sedok. And they left Jerusalem because they criticized the temple in Jerusalem and they came to live right over here at the midst of the desert. And the third, no personal belongings whatsoever. Just like the early Judeo-Christian community in Jerusalem, they gave all their private property to the community and shared all their property together. So, what we see over here, that's the community center, and that's Ahloidiva. <laughs> this is the watchtower of Qumran, and it's surrounded with a wall. The people didn't live over here, that was just the community center. They lived in man-made caves, and a radius of about one mile around us. Okay? And that was the community center. The community center was actually divided into two sections by the main road that you see right over here. Okay? That was the administration area where they had the field, the workshops, the cemetery, and all the rest. And here was the community center. If you look down there, you can see the big room. The big room, mm -hmm. that's probably the most famous room, and the second floor as well, that's the scribe room. That's where they copied and wrote down this precious scrolls. We found some ink wells over here and remains of a scribe stable. Another famous room will be just the room next to it. This was probably the library. We found many toilets. The people of Qumran understood the scriptures as it is. The Bible tells you, you must study day and night. So they understood it as it is. They dedicated at least one third of the day and one third of the night to studying the Torah. Now, all the groups are going to see cave number four, and that's where we're heading to. In cave number four, they found thousands of small fragments that originally came from 118 biblical scrolls. 
which actually includes all the books of the Old Testament beside the book of Esther. And there are good chances that the guy who hide them over there actually took the scrolls from this library and quickly ran and hide it in this cave. Came down and been accumulated over here and filled all the cisterns. And that's a ritual bath. Yes, the ritual bath was a closed building. Otherwise, the water will evaporate. You don't want the sun to hit your water. So imagine a closed building and two small doors, one over here and one over here. And notice those stairs that you're already familiar with in Jerusalem. Remember, three mm -hmm. short, short ones and then a long one. Mm -hmm. Yes, allowing people to be baptized carefully. But what's special about this, it's big. Yes, it's bigger than the one we saw at uh, Magdala, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, because this is for public use, allowing uh, uh, numerous or a lot of people to go and baptize on the same time and you can do it quickly and without touching each other because if the one that go in will touch the one who just sorry if the one that goes out will touch the one that goes in yes it will have to go again yeah. okay so you can see there is a divider there is a way to go in from here and a way to go out from there and every day they started the day praying to white towards the rising sun they went to their daily works they had a uh, uh, agricultural farm over there they had uh, agricultural up there for uh, olives and, vi and wines. And they had a pottery workshop over here. And then they gathered to the morning uh, or to the main communion mill right over here. Uh, something I didn't have a chance to talk about up there. One of the reasons the Kumaran people chose to live over here, it's a dead end place. The Kumaran people believed that the end of the times is coming and it's going to be a battle between the people of darkness and the people of light. Okay? They are the people of light and everybody else are the people of darkness. Mm -hmm. But they are not allowed to hold weapon. Yes? Only until the end of the days. Not like the uh, zealots. Okay? That like they were fighting the Romans. Mm -hmm. So they believe they were needed passive defense. Mm -hmm. So the theory is that the reason why they chose this place... And the reason why they build this watchtower and the reason why they build the wall, yes, to defend themselves against robbers and other attacks, they needed what we call the passive defense. Now, if you look over there, you can see the cliffs and that's the Dead Sea. The water of the Dead Sea was way higher than it is today. And actually from here to the next town in Gedi, you had to take the boat. Okay, there is no road, there is no way to get from here to end it. You have to take the boat. So basically, it's a dead end. It's very close to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is right up there. But if you stand on this watchtower and you look to the north, yes, if somebody come to your direction, he's definitely coming for you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. it's a very good, that's why they chose this location. They had the water source right over there. They had the living water right over here and a dead end and the, when they can keep their passive defense.